The Black Mesa incident changed the trajectory of humanity's future. During this chaos, many strong characters fought their way through the Black Mesa research facility and did their best to take down the Xenian invaders they encountered, stop the Resna's cascade, and essentially escape the facility alive. Two of these people found each other and decided to work together to see what they could do on their path. However, even 20 years after the end of this catastrophic event, the people of Earth are unaware of their sacrifice and even their existence. Who were they? How did they meet? And how did their actions make a difference? Here we explore in the lore and story behind Dr. Colette Green and Dr. Gina Cross. Way before the Black Mesa incident, estimated to have been born between 1968 and 1978, a young Colette Green chose to attend Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This university is well known for its advancements into new fields of study. It was one of the first to explore computer science, machine learning, and robotics. These fields fascinated Colette, and as such, after many years of study, she graduated with degrees in both electrical engineering and the robotics field. Born later between 1974 and 1984, a young Gina Cross applied to study at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, most commonly known as Caltech. After years of study, she graduated with degrees in applied physics, bioengineering, and mechanical engineering. It is unknown the exact year either of these two were born, as the Black Mesa incident is only known to have occurred in the early 2000s. We do know how old each of these were during this incident, therefore, their years of birth can only be estimated within a 10-year span. Gina and Colette's interest in the scientific field and their ability to attain multiple degrees in the various fields of science opened up so many opportunities for them to continue their research. They essentially had the option to apply almost anywhere to continue their work. They were viewed as great assets that could use their knowledge and extraordinary minds to aid in humanity's experiments to understand the universe. After their respective graduations, they both applied to research facilities across the country and were both accepted by the top secret, government-funded Black Mesa Research Facility. As a requirement of Black Mesa, both Colette and Gina moved out into the New Mexico desert and took up residency in the Black Mesa dormitories. Over her years there, Colette worked alongside her administrative sponsor, Dr. Richard Keller, a senior scientist with a level 5 security clearance, and through determination, she worked her way up the ranks as a research associate and earned herself a level 4 security clearance. With this clearance, and under the orders of her sponsor and boss, she became a valuable member of the Anomalous Materials team in Sector C of Black Mesa. The core team worked above with an anti-mass spectrometer to analyze samples as Colette worked below in the anomalous operations center with the samples they used. With her security clearance, she learned that these samples were acquired from a different world, the border world of Zen. As the survey team went out, they explored the floating islands as they procured flora, fauna, and crystal samples. In this new role, Colette became an essential part of the team and, on occasion, was tasked with the appraisal of samples before they were passed on to the team above in Test Lab C33A, where they would blast the sample with high beams of energy with the anti-mass spectrometer. As she received new samples from the survey team of Zen, she passed on her evaluation of spectral fluctuations, size, and purity to the senior staff of Black Mesa and even the office of the administrator of the facility from her anomalous materials lab. Of course, these tests were deemed dangerous as these crystals contained exotic properties, so she wore a maroon hazardous environment suit to keep her safe. Alongside her duties in the Sector C Anomalous Operations Center, she was also asked to lead tours across the facility. One of many was a public relations tour. This truly solidified her position in Black Mesa as a trusted employee. 
As Gina Cross joined the Black Mesa Research Facility, she worked her way up the ranks just like Colette had, and over the years, she split her time between two roles. Also under the administrative sponsorship of Dr. Keller, Gina's first role gave her access to a level 4 security clearance as a senior physicist and research associate in the Anomalous Materials Laboratory with Colette Green. Here, she learned of Zen and worked with handling the anomalous materials as she carefully delivered them to an elevator so that they could be lifted into the chamber with the anti-mass spectrometer to be analysed. Since Gina worked closely with these crystals, she also had to wear a HEV suit, and hers was a tan colour. Gina knew safety well, as her other role required her to spend a lot of time in Sector A's training facility. In her additional role of Hazardous Environment Supervisor, Gina worked on the hazard course and trained the scientists and research associates of Black Mesa on how to safely fulfil their roles. Not only did she work on the hazard course, but she also developed simulations for the higher ranking members of the team, one of which planned was an anti-mass spectrometer overload simulation for Dr. Walter Bennett. This was important given that the facility participated in highly experimental and dangerous experiments. She was also responsible for putting the schedule together so that new scientists could be cleared to continue their work. As one of the more skilled scientists, Gina also worked alongside Dr. Keller and even tested the prototype of the Mark V Hazardous Environment suit. Gina had to split her time between two roles as she could not always be in Sector A. With this, Black Mesa used their advanced technology to recreate an older version of Gina in an artificial intelligence format. After this alternate version of her was created, she recorded voice lines for this AI for the personnel who participated in the course. All they had to do was activate the terminals across the training course to receive additional instructions. This did not remove her position as Hazardous Environment Supervisor as she returned to guide the participants when she could. Gina and Colette worked closely over their time at Black Mesa and slowly became friends. They also became more acquainted with the rest of the Anomalous Materials team in the labs above as they delivered them the crystal samples from Zen and played their role in these experiments by turning on the machine and setting its power to 90%. They were the unseen backbone of the Anomalous Materials team. In the days leading up to the Black Mesa incident, the Anomalous Materials team prepared for their next experiment with a Xenian crystal sample, EP-0021. Over on Zen, the survey team came across an interesting sample, GG-3883, and following regular procedure, it was passed on to Dr. Colette Green to appraise. After she received this sample, Colette wrote down her notes in her lab. She observed that this was not only the largest sample that had been procured from Zen, but it was also the purest she had ever seen. However, she also noticed that this sample revealed unexpected spectral analysis fluctuations. With her work complete on this sample, she wrote up her report and sent it on. Shortly after, she received an email memo from the office of the administrator. In this memo, she was told that the senior staff of Black Mesa wanted to go ahead with the next stage of analysis with the sample, and it would now replace the upcoming experiment with the sample, EP-0021. They understood that as this was larger and it did give off spectral fluctuations, they would have to deviate from standard analysis procedures. With this all set, she was asked to make sure the sample was ready on the day of the experiment for Dr. Gordon Freeman to push it into the beam of the anti-mass spectrometer for in-depth analysis. With these changes, Colette, Gina and the rest of the Anomalous Materials team worked hard to get these modifications implemented in preparation for the upcoming simulation. On the day of the experiment with the Xenian Crystal Sample, GG-3883, the Anomalous Materials team fell behind their schedule due to the changes that had been made to the testing procedure. 
The additional power required for the anti-mass spectrometer led to blackouts, system crashes and data loss across the Black Mesa facility. The machine normally ran at 90%, but this revision by the administrator asked for 105. Below the anti-mass spectrometer, in the Anomalous Materials Operations Center, Dr. Keller complained that the materials handler, Dr. Gordon Freeman, was running late. In preparation, he asked Gina to retrieve the crystal sample from storage and place it into the delivery elevator so that it would be ready for whenever Gordon eventually arrived. Gina followed his order. However, the delivery system failed to work. To fix this, she entered a lower region of the anti-mass spectrometer and pulled out a crowbar from the elevator mechanism. This fixed the issue and the sample was ready to go upon request. As the experiment began, Colette turned on the machine and pushed its power to 105% as scheduled. Over an intercom, Gina and Colette heard a running commentary from Dr. Isaac Kleiner from above, as he ordered Dr. Freeman to push the crystal into the anti-mass spectrometer. Then, they heard the aftermath as the crystal hit the beam of the machine and shattered. Almost immediately, the chamber flooded with exotic energy from the crystal and a resonance cascade occurred. This ripped open a rift in space between Earth and Zen. Over the following hours, this tear pulled through hostile Zeni creatures into the claustrophobic halls of the science facility. Headcrabs, Vortigaunt and Houndite to name a few killed anything they saw. Together, Gina and Colette fought their way through Black Mesa towards the surface with Dr. Rosenberg as Dr. Keller stayed behind to discover what had gone wrong and how they could fix this. The duo's partnership worked. Colette appeared to enjoy killing the waves of Xenian forces on their way, as Gina calmly helped her. In their employee handbooks, Gina and Colette had been informed that if a dangerous event occurred that the in-house security team could not take care of, Black Mesa did have access to a government force that could come in and help them. With this in mind and the safety of the remaining personnel of Black Mesa as a high priority, they reached the surface and successfully sent out a distress call for the help of this government force. With help on the way, Gina and Colette left Dr. Rosenberg and returned to Dr. Keller. He believed that if they resealed the dampening locks of the anti-mass spectrometer, it could seal the bridge between Earth and Zen. Unfortunately, this did not have the result Keller had anticipated. Next, Dr. Keller believed that they could use a prototype displacement beacon to create a resonant reversal and seal the rift, but to do this, they needed a satellite in orbit. They soon learned that Black Mesa was under military lockdown as a result of their distress call, so Gina and Colette had to override this, which they managed to. The issue was that this hazardous environment combat unit sent in by the government had actually been ordered to wipe out the personnel of Black Mesa, and as a result, had taken command of the control room they needed to launch the rocket. Unable to access this room, the scientists asked for the help of Dr. Gordon Freeman to launch the rocket with the satellite so that they could continue their mission. Over some time, Gordon managed to take out these soldiers and shortly after, he launched the rockets for them. Ready to do their part, Gina, Colette and Dr. Keller arrived at Black Mesa's Gamma Labs, the home of the prototype displacement beacon. After they fought off a wave of Xenian creatures, they successfully activated the beacon and initiated the resonance reversal. They had done everything they could do to reverse this disaster, but the Nylanth, a powerful creature on Zen, used its abilities to keep this rift open between Earth and Zen from its side, and their efforts had been in vain. So instead, Gina, Colette and Dr. Keller attempted to leave the facility. Although they had attempted to close the rift between Earth and Zen, Dr. Colette Green and Dr. Gina Cross's actions had not completely been successful. All they could do was attempt to flee the facility as more and more Zenian creatures flooded through. They had originally chosen to stay in Black Mesa over this instant to fix the issue and save the remaining personnel, while many others would have simply only thought about their own survival. 
Over the next few hours, a government force entered Black Mesa and activated a thermonuclear device. This led to the complete destruction of the entire Black Mesa facility and the death of everyone and everything inside. Gina's body was discovered inside a flooded Zenian region. She died at the young age of 25. It is unknown what event transpired that led her here, but she would have likely fought until the very end. As for Colette, at the age of 31, her fate is ultimately unknown. Some believe she was killed by Xenian forces, others think she fell with the Black Mesa facility, and there are a few that believe she was plucked out of reality by the G-Man to work as his new hire. No one knows which of these fates is true. However, humanity would never know of their sacrifice and their fight to save the rest of the planet. For some behind the scenes, I found a few things worth noting. The first is that Gearbox adjusted the design of Gina a little bit when they adapted her into an actual character in the series. Gina was originally just a hologram in the Hazardous training course in Half-Life. When they adapted her, they changed the colour of her HEV suit to tan and aged her down. It is unknown why they did this, but I thought I would clear it up as I said that Black Mesa aged her up for the hologram. That was a creative decision on my part just to make sense of that slight change. Gina is also the only protagonist we hear speak, apart from Alex in Half-Life Alex. Finally, we do find Gina's body in opposing force, but her hair is different and she's wearing Colette's HEV suit. Maybe Colette died or she gave Gina her suit to wear. I'm not sure why she wears the maroon suit. The body is also named Gina in the game files and Randy Pitchford has stated that Colette may be with the G-Man right now. It is interesting to think that if we do ever get a new game, we could potentially see the return of Colette and Adrian. That would be incredible. It was also great to find out who had taken the HEV suits either side of Gordon in Half-Life. This week we have a shorter video. Although fascinating characters, Gearbox did not give a ton of lore for Gina and Colette. I do really like these characters and their story. While Decay is probably one of the least played and maybe unknown to some, they do add some great stories and lore to the Half-Life universe. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I do appreciate it. I think that was everything I wanted to say really, so please share it, please like it, please subscribe if you are interested in deeper dives, and also leave a comment for the algorithm, it would help a lot. Finally, I would like to thank my gold tier patrons and channel members, Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Chicken Guy 791 Ruben Mendoza, Montana Tusker, Mosfalit, Lars Lowell, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, Noah, and Azu. Thank you guys so much. I, I appreciate it so much. If you would like to help support the channel, then there is a link in the description for you to become a patron. I post these videos early on Patreon, I give some behind the scenes stuff, I post scripts, that kind of stuff. As always, thank you so much for your continued support. Who did you prefer, Gina or Colette? Did you manage to play Decay back when it was on PlayStation 2? And what topic would you like me to cover next? Let me know in the comments below. This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.